I always tell our clients when they assign a case to us to not give us any more information than they absolutely have to until we're done with our testing process. Once the report is written and it's time to do the deposition, then it's time to learn more about the case because bias has to stay out of the lab. Many of our client attorneys will be ready to dump a bunch of information on us when we take a case. Depositions, police reports, uh, all kinds of things that are not important to our investigation. And what it does is it helps us become more familiar with the case, yes, but on the other side, it helps us to start building a subconscious bias. So it's best to keep all of the unnecessary information out of the lab so that our bias remains very low. So that when we're asked under oath what documents we've been provided, there's nothing for them to attack us on. That helps to protect the integrity of what we do and the integrity of our work product and our report. My name is Matthias Marcoux, and I'm a forensic examiner and audio engineer here at Primo Forensics. I examine analog and digital audio recordings for forensic audio authentication analysis on a daily basis. Audio forensic authentication is the process of analyzing a digital audio recording that is going to be used in either a private matter or litigation to determine if it is consistent with an original. We look for signs of tampering or consistencies with a exemplar recording that we make that is on the same device as the evidence recording. We compare characteristics of both to see if they are consistent or inconsistent. Our experience comes in the form of day-to-day -day lab activity. You can sit in a classroom and be trained A, B, and C on how to authenticate a digital recording, but what it really boils down to are the cases that you work on on a day-to-day -day basis, because this is where we start to find the new equipment, the new software apps. And when we create an exemplar, we've got to make that exemplar the exact same way that the original recording has purported been made. In other words, if an application was used, the operating system, the hardware, and all of the other tools that were used to create that, that recording need to be the same. Because then we can look at how the app behaves. What does it do if it's interrupted? What does it do when it's on a different operating system? When conducting a forensic audio investigation, we have an evidence recording, which we refer to as the unknown recording. And we have an exemplar recording that we create in our lab which we refer to as the known recording. The unknown recording or evidence recording is what is being analyzed and submitted to court or for the private matter. The exemplar recording is a recording made on the same make and model device so that we can directly compare that with the evidence recording to look for consistencies and inconsistencies. Metadata is information stored on the file that isn't the actual media content. It is additional information regarding the date and time that the recording was created, the length of the recording, the type of file that the recording is, and what device and make model it was created on. The metadata can indicate whether the recording is a direct export from that device or if it's gone through other processing since it was created. We have to critically listen to the audio to make sure that we're not hearing anything suspicious in the audio listen for anomalies that may indicate that something occurred. We also look at the frequency response of the audio so we can compare it with an exemplar recording. And all of these tests, we have to compare any characteristic that we note in the audio recording itself to the exemplar recording to determine if they're consistent. This includes sound quality, uh, compression levels, the overall level of the recording, we listen for signs of automatic gain settings, high-pass filters. Um, we look for signs of compression at the beginning and end of the file, which can include start and stop signatures in the audio. All of these things are present just in the audio content itself and have to be analyzed, especially when metadata is not available.
chain of custody can be crucial to an investigation because it gives us information about how the recording was created and more importantly how it was handled from its creation. It shows a record of who's handled the file since it was created, how it was transferred from one person to another, and what devices it was transferred on. During the investigation, we can use this information to compare with the evidence recording to determine if it's consistent with what the chain of custody has listed or if there are any anomalies that need to be analyzed further. With a lot of different files and different devices, we can determine if the uh, information that was reported in the chain of custody information is accurate and consistent with what we're seeing on the recording. A lot of that information includes date and time, make and model of the device, format of the recording, and specific settings to the audio content. Once we've completed our investigation, we often need to create a forensic report documenting all of our testing and our conclusions. In this report, we walk through our entire investigation and analysis step by step, explaining everything that we analyzed, everything that came back. We include figures so we can explain what we're referring to throughout the report, and then we come to a conclusion based on all of the evidence that's presented. We often have our reports peer-reviewed by another forensic expert outside of Primo Forensics or internally within Primo Forensics to confirm that the methods we used are accurate. When forming our conclusions and opinions for an audio authentication analysis, it's largely objective. It's based on all of the facts that we've analyzed throughout the investigation. Most of the people that hire us don't think of bias they continue to move toward what they believe is true. And a lot of times we deliver answers to them that they don't want to hear. And some of the time it's that it's not authentic. Some of the time it's that we can't prove scientifically whether the recording is authentic or not. The bottom line is you do a test, you start at the beginning, and you go all the way through to the end, and you analyze the data, and you arrive at a conclusion that's based on science. That's the bottom line with audio authentication.